Good morning, boys and girls. It's great to be back with you again today. Today, Kendall, is Palm Sunday, which is the beginning of Holy Week here. And, and we'll be celebrating all the way through Easter, but we start today with the traditional Palm Sunday, which is the story of Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem, where the people celebrate him. But I need your help, boys and girls, this morning for Kendall and I to be able to tell the story to you. We want you to do some sound effects at home. So Miss Kendall, can you tell the boys and girls what sound yes. effects we need help with the today? The first sound effect is snoring. <sighs> All right, let's hear some of them. Oh, good job, Pastor Lynn. That's I can snore. <laughs> Another one is people eating. So you're oh. gonna wanna go grab some silverware and a plate or a bowl, and we're gonna pretend to eat. Mmm, so mm. good. Don't forget to grab your drink. Mmm. Okay, Next. I think we can do that. Yes. <laughs> Next will be leaves rustling, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our hands. So you're gonna take both hands and put them together, just like brushing something off. And then, shocked. We're shocked. <gasps> Awesome. I think I can do that. And lastly, <laughs> people running away. So you want to stomp your feet on the ground really loud, like you're running away. And if I want you all to get louder, I will put my thumb up. And if I want you to get quieter, I'll put my thumb down. And then when I want you to stop, I'll stop you. Okay, I think, I think boys and girls, we have all those motions and you're gonna help us yes. as I tell the story from our Bible. Well, today we will be in two books of the Bible, boys and girls. We're going to be in the book of John at first, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go back a little bit and we'll go to the book of Matthew. So, boys and girls, you know what question Miss Kendall and I are going to ask you right now. Where in our Bible do we find the books of Matthew and John? The New Testament. The New Testament. I hope you all got that right, boys and girls. So, we will be in the New Testament this morning. Well, All right, boys and girls, so our story begins this morning in the book of John. Jesus is about to enter into the city of Jerusalem with his disciples. They're going there, and it's Passover. It's time to observe Passover. This was a Jewish holiday that everyone had a meal together. They observed the holiday. And we can't forget that Jesus' mother was Mary. And she was married to Joseph, so this was Jesus' father here on earth. And they were Jewish, so it would be common for Jesus to observe this meal and this holiday with the disciples. So they get ready to come into the city, and Jesus has his disciples with him. And the people who did love Jesus were very excited. They were cheering. Oh, and so they grabbed the palm fronds, and they shouted, Hallelujah! And they cheered and they praised Woo! Jesus. And they even took the palm fronds and laid them in the road. And some took their coats off so that the dust, remember there was no highways, no concrete, were dirt, and the dust would rise up. So this was to keep the dust down. And this was their way of honoring who Jesus was. Well, as they come into the city, remember the religious leaders don't like Jesus. And they decided they would reach out to Judas, who was one of Jesus' disciples. And they asked Judas to help them trick Jesus to betray him. Now, I would think, Kendall, that Judas would have said, no, no, no. But he didn't. He did say, I will betray Jesus to you at a certain time for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver just for money so Judas would do that later on in our Bible story so we pick up here at the beginning with Jesus has entered triumphantly into Jerusalem and he has gone upstairs with all his disciples to observe the Passover meal so boys and girls we're going to eat our Passover meal so grab your bowl and your silverware and your cup. All right, are we ready? And the disciples sit around the table with Jesus and they began to eat. They have food prepared. Mm. How's those sound effects going? 
If you're like us at the table, it's mmm, mmm, <laughs> yummy. Because remember, they're probably tired and hungry. All right. And as Jesus is having the Passover meal, he does something very special. He wants to prepare his disciples for what he knows is coming. He knows that he is about to leave them and return to his heavenly father. And so throughout the meal, he stops and he takes bread, which is very common, and he breaks it and he passes it to his disciples. And he says to them, whenever you eat this, do this remembrance of me and my body, which is broken for you. Well, the disciples are probably looking at each other going, what does that mean? You're right here. This is bread. How is it going to be your body? And then he takes the cup filled with wine and he passes it to the disciples. He pours into their cups. And as the cups go around the table, he says, and every time you drink from this cup, I want you to remember that it was my blood shed for your sin for the redemption of the entire world. Well, the disciples didn't understand at this point in time. But for us today as believers and Christians, we know that this was the last supper that the Lord had. And he told them and told us that we are to constantly have the Lord's Supper so that we never forget what his crucifixion and death on the cross and resurrection was all about. So today in churches and in homes, we observe or we have the Last Supper, but this is where it began. And so let me read what Jesus said to his disciples from the book of John. will be in chapter 16. And he starts out and he says to them, In a little while you won't see me anymore, but a little while later after that you'll see me again. What? What does that mean? He doesn't understand. But then they go on down in verse 26 and he says this yes I came from the father into the world and now I will leave the world and return to the father you know Kendall the disciples didn't understand that what do you mean you're here and then you're going to be gone and, and returning to your father what does that mean what Jesus was trying to tell them and boys and girls he's trying to tell us is that his time here on earth was very short and he knew he was going to go back to heaven. His time was done here. He just had a few more things to do. Well, as they're eating the meal, Judas leaves. I guess maybe he told him he had an errand to do or something like that. But Jesus wanted to prepare his friends. And so he took them to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, we're going to pray. And he took, as Peter, James, and John... Ah, oh, the leaves are rustling yes, in the garden as they get there. That's wonderful. And he took Peter, James, and John, and he said to them, I want you to sit over here, and I want you to pray and keep watch with me while I go over to this corner, and I am going to pray. Because Jesus wanted to talk to his heavenly Father. He wanted that time alone to ask God if there was any other way to let that happen. But if not... He would be obedient to God his Father. Because see, Jesus knew the crucifixion was coming. Where he would die on the cross for us. But he loved his dad so much. He loved God that he said, I will do whatever you ask of me. And so, <clears throat> as they're praying, something happens. Let's look at Matthew 26 now in verse 38. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And he went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground. Pray, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Well, Jesus goes on, and then he returned to his disciples and found them sound asleep. And then he says to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray. Jesus is upset. 
He says, so that you will not get into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Jesus was upset because they couldn't even stay awake one hour while he prayed. And then Jesus left a second time and prayed, My Father, God, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. Jesus is pleading with God. If any other way can be found, let's see it. But he comes back and guess what he finds again? That's right. The disciples were snoring and they were sound asleep. They really must have been tired. And Jesus is upset and he says, wake up. And they wake up again and he tells them, stay awake and pray. And he went away and he prayed again. But he trusted in God's plan and he was obedient. He came back one more time to his disciples. And what do we think he found? <clears throat> That's right. So Jesus, when he went to pray the third time, saying the same things, and he came back to his disciples, go ahead and sleep. Just sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is portrayed into the hands of sinners. Up. Get up. Let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And who was this betrayer, Kendall? Judas. That's right. Judas, one of his disciples, one of those that had followed him. Well, when Judas had arrived into the garden, there was a large crowd that had been sent by the religious leaders. Part of Judas' plan that morning was to greet Jesus with a kiss. A kiss of friendship. That was a very common way for people to greet each other. So that the mob, though, would know that was Jesus that was to be arrested. And it goes on to say in our Bible, Jesus said to him, My friend, that's how he greeted Jesus. My friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. See, Jesus knew knew that Judas would betray him, but that was part of God's plan. And so then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. <gasps> they did. They arrested the beloved Jesus. And then one of the men, Peter, pulled out his sword and struck the high priest slave, slashing off his ear. <gasps> And the people were shocked. The disciples couldn't believe it. But then Jesus touched the servant's ear and the man was healed. That's right. What a special time that was. Here is Judas, supposedly a friend of Jesus, who betrays him for 30 pieces of silver. And here is Peter, a beloved disciple, who's so angry and upset he reacts with violence and slashes the poor servant's ear off. And how does Jesus respond? He's being obedient to God, but he took time to heal the, disciple, the servant's ear. Well, Jesus is arrested and the mob follows him and he's led away. But what did Jesus' friends do that had come with him? The people who remember were waving their palms earlier and praising Jesus Woo! and being excited. Now, what do the disciples do? They run away. They ran as fast as they could. And I remember at the beginning of our story, boys and girls, that Peter said, I will never, ever deny you, Jesus. Jesus had chosen the path that he was to follow. He was obedient to God, his Father. He knew what was coming, boys and girls. But on that Palm Day, he entered the city being celebrated by the people. And in the end, being betrayed, not just by Judas, but the disciples who also ran away, and all the friends who turned their back on Jesus. But that was part of God's plan. Jesus showed humility in the way he behaved. He told Judas, do what you must do. He healed the servant's ear so that Peter wouldn't feel that betrayal. 
and he allowed himself to be led away, arrested. We can follow Jesus' example too today in how we live, boys and girls, by being humble and understanding that when sometimes God asks us to do things that are hard, he asks us to forgive people who've hurt us. But we re need to remember to always put others first, Kendall, even over our own selves. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're all being challenged to put others first, to not cry or be sad or be upset because things are different, but to remember to be helpful and kind and loving and show ways that we can at home put others first. Because when we need God's help, He's always there for us. And we want to treat others the way we want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So today, boys and girls, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, Kendall and I want you to remember that. Treat others the way you want to be treated and put others first this week. There's an acronym for that. Oh, there is. Let's learn it. It's joy. Jesus, oh. others, yourself. I like that. Can we say that out loud together, everybody at home? Joy. Joy. Jesus, Jesus others, yourself. yourself. And that's the way we should live. Until we see you again, boys and girls, have a very blessed week. We love you and we miss you.